Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Nari Heshpati. I'm a board certified OBGYN in the North Seattle area near Everett, Washington. And today I want to talk to you about delayed cord blood clamping in uh, pregnancy and in deliveries. Um, I chose kind of a black and white background for here because I want to make a point that, you know, we look at a lot of data and evidence now in medicine and not all of it is always black and white. So I often kid around with my patients and I say, you know, what I tell you in one pregnancy may be different than what I tell you in another pregnancy or even at the end of that pregnancy as new data comes out. And delayed cord blood clamping. This is something that I remember when I first heard about it, I thought, well, maybe this is a fad. Is there really good data behind it? And as we got more and more data, this is something that I'm really becoming a strong advocate of. And so let's talk about, you know, what is the umbilical cord? What is delayed cord blood clamping? And so the umbilical cord, that's basically what goes from the placenta to the baby. It's the conduit that has two arteries and one vein, and it's surrounded by Wharton's jelly, that protective jelly. And that's going to be basically what gets blood flow and nutrients to the baby and takes deoxygenated blood uh, and basically waste away from the baby. Now, if you look back historically, back before the 1950s, uh, they typically considered early cord blood clamping, meaning baby came out and you clamped the cord too early, as less than a minute, and they considered late clamping if it was more than five minutes. Then over time, as the years came on, you know, there was really no data or research into this, and so we started to clamp the cord sooner and sooner after birth, until the point where it was pretty much an immediate thing. We would clamp, cut, hand the baby off. Uh, you know, as people started to look at it more, they said, is there some benefit to getting uh, more blood to the baby by delaying when you clamp the cord after delivery? Now, in the first probably minute uh, after the baby's born, 75% of the blood that the baby's going to get from that transfusion from the placenta has, has occurred. So that's kind of what we're looking at and what we're talking about. Now, when they took a look at it, they found in term, meaning healthy, normal term babies, if you delayed the cord blood clamping, uh, they typically had less anemia, meaning higher iron stores, uh, and uh, they were going to have higher blood counts. Uh, and when you look at that, they start to say, well, uh, you know, iron deficiency can be associated with developmental delays, so can this have a long-term benefit for the baby? Well, then when they took a look at preterm babies, they saw even a better benefit, because in preterm babies, if the delay uh, clamping in the cord, you lower the need for blood transfusions in those babies. You also decrease the incidence of intraventricular hemorrhage, which is brain bleeds, and necrotizing enterocolitis, which is a, you know, it's a condition where the, the bowel can actually die, so really serious conditions. So as that data started to evolve, so have our recommendations. So most of us have started to say, well, you know what, we should wait when we delay the cord, uh, delay cord blood clamping, we should wait after the delivery. So when you take a look at it and go, well, how do you do that? Uh, the initial thought was, well, you've got to have the baby below where the placenta is going to be to help facilitate that transfusion of blood. The reality is we've got some data now that says, you know, you can still do skin to skin where we take the baby right after delivery, put it right on the mom's chest, and we're probably still going to get a good amount of transfusion of blood to the baby. Uh, you know, when you take a look and you say, are there any risks to this? There is one tiny risk that, you know, we do see an increased incidence of jaundice, or basically uh, hyperbilirubin area, more bilirubin basically in the baby. And so there's a higher incidence of them having to go under phototherapy or light therapy. So that is the, the one negative we see to this. Uh, but overall, there seems to be a good, strong benefit. It's simple, it's easy to do, and most of the professional societies are recommending this. So the American College of OBGYNs recommends you wait 30 to 60 seconds after delivery before you clamp the cord. Uh, that's similar in line with the American Association of Pediatrics. The World Health Organization says you should wait for a minute. Um, the uh, American Association of uh, nurse midwives says you should probably uh, wait between two and five minutes and the Royal College of OBGYNs, the British OBGYN Society says two minutes. So really, you know, probably a minute or more uh, is going to be beneficial. You're going to get that extra blood to the baby. You're probably also going to get some immunoglobulin stem cells, things that are going to help uh, for regenerative tissue damage and things like that in the baby. So it seems to be a benefit, maybe a minimal small risk of some more jaundice needing to go under the uh, phototherapy lights. So, you know, it's something that I'd encourage you to talk to your provider about. Let them know you're, in, you're interested in having delayed cord blood clamping. Um, you know, I do point out that these are in scenarios where things are going well. So obviously if the baby delivers and seems uh, under distress or seems like they need some additional assistance, then we still need to get the baby out and get them the care they need. But in an otherwise normal, healthy baby that delivers, um, we can put the baby right up on your chest. We can wait a little bit clamp the cord, it's going to be a benefit. And I think if you talk to your provider about it more and more as this data is coming out, people are going to be open to doing delayed cord blood clamping. So 
you know, as, as I said before, you know, data changes, evidence changes, medicine changes, and so do we, and so we adapt to that. So this is something that patients are asking for more and more and more. There's evidence and there's data, and so we're going to start doing it. Thanks a lot.